Today's Excel video lesson will go over five powerful Excel tips that I think were useful enough to put into their own video. There's an information blurb about each one in the posting, and I will put the time that each one starts if you want to skip to the one that you're interested in. Make sure you've downloaded the most recent master workbook, and you want to go to sheet 14, which says five tips. You'll see that first is dynamic named ranges. This is a follow-up to my named ranges video, which goes over how to name ranges in Excel using the name box up here. You'll see when I hit this drop down, a listing of the regular named ranges will show up. There's also something that's a little bit limiting about using a named range, which is that it doesn't change when your data changes. So if you want to have a named range that as you add items to the bottom underneath your list it will keep updating the named range you'll need to use something called dynamic named ranges. If you go to the autofill tab you'll see that above number, day, formula, and month I've put four drop down data validation cells and what I've done is show you a few different ways of using the name manager here to have some dynamic formulas. You'll see that in each of these I have an offset function and these are based off of the post that I linked on Ozgrid so feel free to check that out if you want to get a little bit more background but first I'll just show you quickly how the offset function is created. Usually what we'll use an offset function for is to take a reference and move it a certain amount of rows or columns away but you'll see that it also has this height and width functionality that can be used to create a formula that will essentially allow you to dictate the height in this case or the width if you wanted to do column headers of a range that you could then name and I'll show you how that's done So what you need to do is go to Name Manager and you'll hit New and you'll see that asks you for the name and here it has a Refers To and here's where you would put that offset function. I've already named these ranges so I won't go into detail on that but that's how you would name one if it already wasn't named. I've done it with four of the different examples from the Ozgrid post and so you'll see that the offset function in all of these cases has zero for the row and column offset but then has a count function in this instance count A which counts the number of non-blank cells in a range or it might have a match function depending on which example from the posting I'm showing. So if we look at dynamic number you'll see that it has offset autofill B4 which is this number one zero rows, zero columns and then it has a count function to determine how many cells below it are actually a number. And you'll see if I click on this, it'll show one, two, and three. But if I extend this downward, the named range updates, and therefore the data validation updates as well. One limiting factor is that they don't show up in this name box when you click the drop down. And so keep that in mind when you're naming your ranges that it won't show up here. So I've gone through four of the examples from the Osgrid post. Here's a quick look at it. It would be the exa examples for one, two, three, and four, depending on which type of information is shown in your name range, whether it's a number, text, a mix of the two. So you'll see each of these will successfully update as I fill down. One of the problems with the first grouping you'll see is that if I delete a value in the middle it will show the blank and it won't go to the end of it because it's counting the number within whatever range I give it and I think in this instance I use B4 to B100 and therefore it comes up with six entries and that offset function only grabs a height of six for the range. Same with the with the day if I delete a value in the middle you'll see it won't show me the whole range. In these two instances the formulas used will not only allow the blank to show up but it will show the full range because it doesn't 
shorten the range because it uses the match function instead to find the, where the last value is. So I'd recommend taking a read through his post and looking at these examples for how to use it. Next I will show you how to use the find and select go to special which can be found in the editing menu on the home page under find and select go to special and you'll see here it has many options for what you can choose personally I think the most interesting ones are constants which will give you anything that is a hard-coded value rather than a formula so if I click constants it gives me some options numbers text logical errors I'll hit OK and you'll see that it highlights everywhere where I have typed something into the cells which is B3, B4, C1 and so on also you could have it do blanks which would give me essentially everything else and you can also see where your data ends so it views the last row as 23 last column as E there was one time where I had a lot of pictures in a file and they were not showing up so I use this objects find and select go to special to delete them all conditional formatting is good same with data validation if you're using some of the examples that I've shown another interesting one is visible cells so if you're using a filter area click on this filtering tab and let's say we wanted to filter out every item that is priced at ten dollars we could go to ten dollars here all of these will show up we can go to find and select go to special after highlighting the rows click visible cells only then right click delete rows and once we clear that filter you'll see that all of the ten dollar items have been erased so if you want to use it to filter a list and then delete everything you found in that filter visible cells would work as well it's also good when you have hidden rows or grouped rows and you don't want to extend a formula through those as well you could do it just on the visible cells next what I'm gonna go over is something I refer to as 3d formulas and editing you'll see over here I have a sheet one for week one sales sheet two for week two sales and a sheet three for week three sales all with the same formatting so that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday are all in the same area on each sheet and each week's sales are displayed on separate sheets. I've also got this sum sheet which essentially uses 3D formulas to grab everything between the one and the three. This would be very helpful if you have many sheets and you continually update sheets. You can have a placeholder blank sheet at the beginning and the end and sum up everything in between them on a specific cell or reference. So you'll see all of these formulas have the sheet name with a colon and then the ending sheet name which can be very useful if you've set up templates that are all in the exact same format and especially if you're going to continually update and add new ones you can always sum what's ever in between a certain number of sheets and you'll see here I have the sum of the above and I also have a 3d formula sum of the totals and you'll see that these two match and we'll just go ahead and check on one of these to make sure it's pulling in correctly we've got quantity for Monday is 27 total so if I click on the first one we have 9 plus the second one is 16 which is 25 so we're getting close and the last one has 2 which totals to 27 so it works now let's try doing that with another formula and we'll write this one from scratch only certain formulas actually work with this 3d functionality and I've put a listing on the five tips page underneath which have all of the functions that you can use in a 3d formula I'll take for example the max function which returns the largest value and I'll put that one in right here so equals max then we'll do a apostrophe one colon three apostrophe exclamation point e6 colon e12 and you'll see it says 578 if we click through them real quick you'll see on the third page 578 is the highest value so feel free to take a look at those formulas and mess around and see what you can get 
for uh, functionality. And in this tip I also mentioned 3D editing, which is editing cells across multiple workbooks at the same time. So if I selected sum, which I'm already on, and hold shift and click on the three, you'll see that they turn a different color here. Also at the top of the file, you'll see in brackets it says group next to your file name. That means that you have multiple sheets selected. So if you're ever uncertain how many sheets you have selected, you can look up top to see if it's grouped. Another way to do this, once you click off of it to unselect them, is to go on a page and then hold control down as you click other sheets and you'll see they, see they turn this white color. Now anything I do on any of the sheets will happen to all of them at the same time. So let's say if we wanted to highlight Wednesday's row, I will click on the fill, then I will click off of it so that I'm not sh selecting all four sheets, and as I click through each one you'll see Wednesday was highlighted. You can also do this with formulas and all sorts of formatting, so feel free to try it out yourself. And so next we have text to columns. If you go to the example data tab, you'll see down bottom here underneath the data above I have two listings. First we have full name, so it has a bunch of people's first and last name. If you select this area and click on the data tab, you'll see this text to columns area. If I click on that, delimited is what you want to choose. Hit next. I've already got space selected, but you'll see you can also use tab, semicolon, comma, or other where you could put your own in, which I'll show you in a minute. Then it gives you the option of choosing each column, changing the data format. So I hit finish, and you'll see that it broke out each person's name into first and last name automatically by the space. If you have something else that's separating values other than one of the options they gave you, you could also do other. So in this example, I've got a slash in between each of these. So I'll click text to columns, go delimited, then instead of this time I will unclick space, do other, type in a slash, then hit next, and here you can change where it goes. So I'll do C61 instead, and hit finish. And you'll see that it broke this out into each individual piece, but since I chose C61, it actually moved it over and left the original here unlike here where it wrote over the original depending on how you want to do it. And lastly I'll show you how to customize the ribbon menu tabs and menu groups. You may notice on this home tab here I have an area called Ben which has all sorts of functionality from Excel that I like to use a lot like pivot tables and data validation conditional formatting and I've selected these myself as a custom group within the home tab and I got rid of some of the typical ones so if you right click on the ribbon you'll see here it says customize the ribbon here you'll see a listing of all of the tabs that are currently showing and if you hit the plus sign next to each it will expand the options underneath them so I've already created a new group called Ben with all of my selections you'll see down bottom you can pick new group if you click that you'll see that it inserts a new group and you can click rename to change the name of that group now in order to fill up the group with options you pick them from the left side let's say email for instance and you'd click add to add it to the custom group I won't go through all of that because I've already listed them here but I will go through the options for what you can choose from so if you click this drop down menu this is where you can select where to narrow down the options for what they list to add. If you can't find it, chances are you will be able to find it in all commands since this is a massive listing of almost anything you could think of in Excel. So if you're really looking hard and can't find it, try this all commands list. You can also add a new tab, which would be its own complete section just like the home and insert and data areas and it has some additional tabs if you click on all tabs here which aren't typically showing so depending on if you use more pivot table tools or chart tools or whatever 
you could have that showing at all times. So that's basically all for this lesson and I hope you enjoyed it.